All right, good morning YouTube. It is Nick with NK Landscaping again as usual. You may be able to hear a symphony of diesel engines behind you right now. That is because we're gonna be doing something very special today. Um, so if you watched a couple videos back, you may have noticed we got a new lathe, a metalworking lathe. So we're getting into the machining type, you know, hobby, I guess you could say. And after we got that lathe, I caught the bug, and so did Kurt. And next thing you know, uh, found a good deal on a mill. And today, we're gonna hopefully go and pick it up. So, if you don't know much about mills, they're not light. So we've got the truck hooked up to the gooseneck. I'm filling up the Bobcat right now with diesel because it was empty. I gotta go ahead and swap that bucket out for the pallet forks which are over here but well, we got the gooseneck and we've got the skid steer to pick up the mill so we'll take you along for the ride i think we found a good one we'll have to see once we get to it a little later but for now i'm getting ready so that everything's loaded up so i'll bring you back in in a little bit once we have everything loaded filled up and ready to go all right we are loaded up with everything we think we're gonna need I got some straps and chains and lifting slings and everything. We got some bins because this uh, mill is coming with some extra parts, so probably the easiest way to carry it. So let's take the road trip, about an hour and a half up kind of like Northwest to Never Sink, New York. Pick this thing up. in uh, New York this is like Maston Lake Yankee Lake area and we've been going up basically this mountain pass for probably about 10 minutes now the truck can't figure out what gear it wants to be in but for that whole 10 minutes my foot has been buried to the floor just pulling the Bobcat up this hill this is probably like 14 15,000 pound load as we sit now the trucks doing it no problem Beautiful area. Every, every time we go to pick up one of these industrial pieces of machinery, we uh, sure find a nice place to do it. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Just a few minutes away now. We're in wonderful, now technically Liberty maybe, uh, Never Sink, New York. This is a very beautiful area. Not a lot going on up here. Um, I know it's a very small, small town. My college roommate went to uh, that, that I went to school with it was actually from here so I kind of know the area a little bit and I'm pretty sure he told me his class size in high school was 12 so if that puts things into perspective for you but we're just a few minutes away from the house and we're gonna go check this thing out and see what we're working with hopefully load it on the trailer and take it home all right guys 7 55 at night we got to the house at like 5.20, so we spent quite a bit of time talking. Uh, this owner was extremely nice, extremely knowledgeable. He's actually a little younger than me. Um, he's been a machinist for the past seven years, and it's just a little too big for their space, and they're looking to get rid of it. Um, but he walked me through a bunch of stuff, and, and he taught me and Kurt a bunch of things just about that mill, uh, which is really handy. And then, you know, we got the mill loaded up, so we did buy the mill. And he had some other things that we bought as well. And then he threw in a couple other things. So I think total we're in $4,200. Kurt, how do you feel about that? I feel pretty good. I like spending money. Kurt likes spending money. And more than that, Kurt likes buying tools. Well, that, yeah. And uh, not only with the, the bridge port is it a tool, and we got a bunch of tools with it, but uh, Kurt is excited to use it to you know, fix tools. So... We're gonna get it home. We got about an hour and a half drive to home. Make tools. Kurt wants to make some tools. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my homemade tools. Homemade tools for you and me. But uh, yeah, we're gonna get this thing an hour and a half home and the goal for tonight is just to get it in the garage and that's it. Um, and then we'll play with it some more. So I will see you then. Oh, maybe you guys can see it. The screen doesn't show up too well. The moon looks wild 
up there. And of course now it's gone behind the trees. Yeah, you can't see it. Sorry. o'clock p.m. and we are getting this thing up into my garage. I currently got on the pallet forks. It is strapped to the pallet forks in case you're curious. I gotta spin around. I'm trying to curl it up. And I gotta say I am happy that I have a good relationship with all of my neighbors. I'm trying to be as quiet as possible, but... Basically for tonight, since we don't feel like dealing with this in the dark and at 10 o'clock at night, I'm just gonna drop the pallet forks in my garage and we will deal with it uh, hopefully tomorrow morning. guys there's a quick teaser before we get you an in-depth look tomorrow as you can see I've cleared oh I Kurt and me have cleared this corner out and this is gonna be the perfect corner for this thing to sit nice and in here so tomorrow we'll go over everything and you'll get to see that thing hopefully go in the corner and uh, we're gonna get this thing to work I'll see you tomorrow all right it's a new day You'd see, I turned the head on that thing up last night. Uh, the previous owner had texted me. We're kind of going back and forth. He lives locally. Uh, but he said, probably should store it uh, with the head up. We transported it with the head down. Leaked a little bit of oil, but it's been upright overnight. And today's goal is to get this corner cleaned up. So there's a bunch of dirt on the floor. The walls are all nasty from all the shelves being in place. So we're going to get all this cleaned up. And then we're going to attempt to scoot this thing this way, I probably gotta turn that head back at least sideways um, so it clears all my lights and everything. It just fits in here. You can see, I mean, it is probably about an inch off the ground with the pallet forks. But I have just a little bit of clearance to the ceiling. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get this thing scooted over there and put in place. Let's get, get going. So people probably wonder, you know, how we afford to pay for these tool hauls. You know, they're not cheap. Um, we started NK Garage to buy and sell tools, so we make money on that, but a lot of that comes from sacrifices. So to bring this stuff in, not only did I need money, I needed space. So I had to get rid of a lot of my personal, you know, machines that came with this house from my grandparents. Kerr has had to get rid of a lot of his personal stuff, guitars and things like that, his record collection, you know, because we want to fund the bigger goal of kind of making ourselves a little machine shop here. This cabinet came with the house, and we have kind of referred to it as my retirement account, and you'll see why. So my grandfather worked for the New York City Board of Education, uh, basically down in the city for the school system. And when they were done with some of their shop programs, they got new tools, he was able to take home some of their tools. So I have a lot of Stanley equipment. He, he was mainly in the carpentry division. Part of the Stanley collection 
or some brand new in box Stanley wood plants. This is a number five brand. A oh, this is a six. No, that's no yeah, five. this is a five. This is a six. This is another six. Or is mm -hmm. it? Yep. Um, bunch of rabbit planes, spoke shaves, all sorts of stuff. This is just a lot of money worth of stuff. I'm going to be holding on to there is a brand new six and a seven. Or is that a five? It's a brand new five and a seven, yes. new in box. Um, Kurt's gonna pull those out. Now, if you wanna see any more of this in detail, Kurt's gonna have a whole video on this. Um, I'm just trying to explain to you guys how we kinda afford this, because some people may be curious how we can spend thousands of dollars on this stuff. Um, it's just a lot of saving. Yeah, and this is from, I believe, the 80s, made in England, Stanley Bailey, number five. Brand new old stock. See, so yeah, I'm gonna be holding Beautiful. on, holding on to this stuff because it's just, it's, it's art. It really mm -hmm. is art. I'm probably gonna end up putting these in like a picture box to hang on the wall and kind of in memory of my grandfather, um, just because I've always, you know, I remember being a kid playing with a hand plane, and I thought it was so cool how you could just take, you know, precision cuts off of a piece of wood, and I would always play with them. And uh, I think these are some of the coolest tools that kind of got handed down to me. And they don't take up a lot of space, so mm -hmm. look at that. That is the number seven. That is a beautiful tool. It does have a chip here in the paint, but it is never used. Another chip here, you know, from probably from transport. But yeah, hopefully it answers, you know, it's probably the inevitable question. How, how do you pay for this stuff and how do you afford to do this? Well. My garage was full of stuff and I got rid of a lot of it um, to bring this stuff in. So, you know, we're, we're trading off my grandfather and my uncle's woodworking career into, you know, a more of a machine working career. So I'm going to continue cleaning up this corner and uh, hopefully that provides a little insight for you guys. So here's the question. How do you move a 2,000 pound 2,000 to 2,200 pound bridge port into this corner knowing that my skid steer doesn't fit in the garage Man, I don't know This Harbor Freight Jack Is claimed to do one ton which is 2,000 pounds at the shortest extension I don't even know if the bridge port will fit between this But I'm gonna have to tilt the head back down We'll hook onto it and we will attempt it. I just want to get it a quarter inch off the floor enough to roll what do you think? Yes. Uh, I, think, I think we can do it. I think we could do it. Worst case scenario, I just need to get it off the forks and then we'll put some round rod on the ground and kind of pyramid Egyptian style rolled it on the round rod. Um, yeah, let's see. We'll see what happens. You, uh, what do they say? It's, uh, it's not stupid if it works. All right, guys, you probably saw in time lapse our little bit of a struggle getting that thing over there. Uh, it is not light. The engine crane would not lift it fully uh, unless it was sucked down all the way. So combo of the engine crane and the floor jack, we were able to get it over here on blocks. What we're finding now is that this bed or whatever you want to call it, the work surface of the mill is so wide um, you know, I knew that kind of going into this. I kind of wish we got one with a three foot bed. I don't think this is a fully four foot bed, but it's close enough. And it fits in the corner. We still got to push it back a little bit. There's quite a bit of room behind it. Um, and we're still trying to figure out exactly how we're going to do that. Um, cause we can't really pick it up anymore. But a problem that this presents is that it's so close to the lathe. You know, once we push it back, it'll help a little bit. Uh, we have room for the, the bed to go this way. 
but we don't have room for the bed to go this way. Uh, keep in mind the bed is all the way uh, towards the machine and the y-axis. So it, it'll mostly spend its life out a little farther. But the lathe is probably going to have to get scooted over. We don't have a whole lot of room here. I wanted to make sure there was enough room between the lathe and the shelf that we could take the tailstock off. Um, so yeah, we'll have to figure that one out. But now it comes the fun part of trying to figure out how to get this thing back onto the ground and roll it back probably another 8 to 10 inches. Okay, so the mill is in the corner. Um, it fits pretty well. Like I said, that table is a little bigger than I want it to be. When it is in the center, it does not interfere with the door, uh, but it does interfere with the lathe. So we're going to have to scoot the lathe down. I think we have the room to do it. Now our problem is the drawbar. So the drawbar is how you attach your tooling to the bottom of the mill. Uh, that has to drop in from the top. And if you notice, I don't have the room. So what we're going to do, uh, above us is just attic space. And as you get closer to where the roof meets the attic floor, there's not a lot of room. So I don't have any storage space back here anywhere for stuff in the attic. So we're going to drill a hole. Take a flashlight, put it in the bore, and look at that. Nice little light. I'm oh, sorry. Nice little light. Kurt made a little center mark. We're just going to run like a three inch hole saw right there, four inch hole saw, so we can get the draw bar in. Just like that. So that's the draw bar. So it has been about two months, a little over two months since I filmed that last shot and nothing has changed as far as the mill goes. Today that is going to change. Uh, electrician is coming in. We are doing finally a 200 amp upgrade to my house, which involves uh, a new wire and everything from the pole out here but uh a big thing was this line the feeder line coming into my house ripped off during a storm maybe about a month ago the electrician came out tied it back up for now but this is all getting replaced i'm going to get a generator transfer switch all that good stuff i gotta get a new panel in the house because we have an old 1970s panel it's not safe anymore and then the big thing is that the garage is getting its own sub panel So not too bad, since that lathe is probably, I think, 1,500 pounds, and the BX can lift like 600 at its max, or six or 800 pounds. Uh, that made it light enough that we were able to scoot it over, and then we'll get it back in, in its spot at some other point. But that leaves this open so that they can put the panel and some plugs and everything. So now it's time to wait for the electrician to show up, and I actually have to go do my day job. So <laughs> well, I'll see you when this is all installed. The electrical work continues. This is my old, old main house panel from the 70s. And I'm not going to pull this box off, but I got a huge new four foot panel. They actually had to drill through my house. There's the outside there. Uh, and there used to be like a uh, wood paneling and stuff here that all had to get taken out. So that's looking good in here. They're still working on that. And I'll show you the garage. So in the garage, you can see this massive lack of shelf. Um, that's where the generator transfer panel is going to be. So that's an inlet from the fuse panels right behind us. Generator transfer switch is going to go here. And then on the outside we've got a new meter box. And I think the generator plug is going to go somewhere out here as well. But they replaced the whole lead going into my house. That looks so much better than the old one. He said it was the worst he's ever seen. It was actually leaking water into my meter box. So I'm very happy to to be having that replaced. There's the old meter box there. And last but not least, in the garage, don't mind the mess, a lot of work going on. We have the garage sub panel. So this wiring runs up through my attic and over to the main panel in the house. But once this is done, this is basically gonna provide its own circuits for the lathe and the mill as well as the phase converter, which I assume is gonna live in the attic.
All right, guys, it's been quite a few months since you saw the mill enter the garage. A lot has happened in the meantime, and uh, I'll finally give you an update and close this project out. So the electricians came and they did a whole bunch of stuff. One of them being installing a 90 amp sub panel here in the garage. Um, everything from this side over in this garage has not had any power. And I've kind of been running everything off of extension cords and all sorts of junk. So they put in the 90 amp sub panel and this plug right here. Anything else you see has been me, Kurt, and Steph putting stuff in. So let me walk you through this. I just finished installing this. This four gang box and this four gang box are on their own 20 amp circuit. So those are going to be dedicated to running the eventual uh, DRO for the mill digital readout so we can see our position. We don't have one. The one that came with the mill ended up being broken. I tried to repair it. No go. Uh, right now it's running the power feed on the X axis. We're going to end up getting power feeds for the Y and Z axis. So between that and the DRO, that'll load up that four bank of plugs. This is just some extra plugs over here. We do plan on getting a DRO for the lathe at some point, so that'll be uh, some power for that. If you follow over here, I've got another four gang plug. This is mainly for outside and anything over here. That's on its own 20 amp breaker. Well, we're over here. This right here is our three phase converter. So this takes 220 volt single phase, phase power out of the box here sends that up to an idler motor that is above us. You can't see it. There's a junction box there. And that idler motor basically creates a third leg so that we have three phase power coming out of this box. That's what this plug is and that goes to the mill. So start that up and the motor above us starts up and then we have lathe power. That is super cool. The mill is independent of that. We did convert that to single phase, so that runs off of a regular 220 volt plug. So I think it's time to uh, throw something in the mill real quick, make it, and then uh, I'm done with this video. All right, guys, hopefully that was an interesting video for you. We are definitely trying our best to get into hobby machining, um, always buying new tools through NK Garage. So if you haven't checked that out, that's Kurt's channel where we deal with all of the cool tools involved with uh, having this stuff run. So we're definitely gonna be using this on projects and things. We already used it, that clip you saw of uh, running the mill there, that was from my project. Actually, last week we broke the yard max and I needed to make a part on this thing to get it back in action. We got the lathe too. We've made a few parts on that now. So hopefully uh, you enjoyed this one. Uh, drop a comment, like, subscri subscription if you want. If not, that's cool with me too. And I'll see you on the next one.